Hey guys, sorry here. Uh, back with another Brit Lane vlog. Um, just, I like to record these intros the night before because, God forbid, I can't bring myself to do it in the morning much anymore. Um, but yeah, I fell out of love with, with making videos. You know, I just don't like looking at me and talking and then looking at Brit work and that in my spare time all the time. It's just, I look, you know, it's one of them, you know, it comes part and parcel with doing the YouTube videos. And uh, when I was drinking a lot, obviously I'm a year and a half sober now, it was a bit of one of my things, I had a drink, fucking hell, you know, nerves calmed, I could fucking ramble on, on the, uh, you know, on the, on, the, on the microphone or whatever, on the camera. And uh, I didn't think much of it, obviously you don't, you fucking drink, work, film, you don't think much of what you're saying, what you're doing, but, you know, it ain't some I always felt comfortable with doing all the time. A lot of time, I'm half pissed. Half <laughs> fucking, I was on over. Half pissed. You fucking, you guys didn't fucking know that. Um, but yeah, carried along by Stella. You know, with the first couple, first year or so, of making videos at least. But obviously, being sober, I get I get a shit some more done, and I, I get to get off in a, in a lot better time. I've been about, I think it's been about a year. I've done a year of working through. I don't have a snap anymore. Mainly to help me weight problem, because I'll fucking pile weight on, I just have to look at a fucking, look at a fucking sandwich and I fucking have an extra meal a day, I could easily fit an extra two meals in a day. So yeah, but yeah, so tomorrow, I'm building a, building a boundary wall, well, I've already started it, and did some Friday, uh, but it's just piers, it's no, it's no solid wall, it's just piers independent, bit of rick on edge at the bottom. There's a top on, but I've, I've filmed myself doing these tops before, so I'm not going to film that, but I've filmed myself building piers, building the pier freehand, I've done freehand, I don't put, put a couple of profiles on, but I still build it freehand, I don't bother putting lines on, uh, for the main reason is, if you line pillars in, there's a chance they'll fucking go out of pump, because there's no, there's no telling that the first fucking two p pillars you build, line into the other fucking pillars that are already there, so you end up getting like a fucking kink in them. You know what I mean? Or you get the fucking middle one swaying off. So I'll build them freehand. Six foot level. Got Connie bricks. Silo mix. And I'm going to show you a bit of how I go on tomorrow. And uh, just a bit of head cam. I'm going to go and have a look upstairs and charge my head cam up. And just do a... <coughs> just get like a 20 minute clip of me doing a pier. Because I don't know how, how, how long does it take me. I could get a pier. Get a pier tip top in like 20 minutes I think. We get a 10 course on in something like that. 60 bricks in 20 minutes, something like that. Fuck knows. I'm gonna do that and show you how I go on. And then I've got Young Kai. Young Kai will be building one as well. Because I've got, I have to carry my me, me box section around with me. I've got, I've got some old fucking knackered levels. A lot of the time I find them on jobs where people leave them, they don't have any bubbles in, but I use them with straight edges. So some old knackered levels, a few bits of box section, F clamped on. I was going to buy some more f gums of the day, but I just thought I don't even use profile very often now. Only on walls and garages. And obviously on a plot, but I've not been on a plot in fucking four months now. Uh, a full lift anyway. I've squared some stuff up now and again, but it's been doing top outs, walls, garages. Little dwarf walls. A little bit of footing, a little bit of footings and that now and again. So if ever a bit missing. And uh, yeah, that's about it really. That's about it. So I'll uh, I'll see you tomorrow and hopefully I'll uh, be able to record and follow through what I'm saying now. Right, see you in a bit. So we're back again finally with the voiceovers. What a long time it's been. Uh, so yeah, I'm building a two by one and a half brick pier in this clip here. It's a boundary wall, but it's just a series of piers. We've got about ten piers to go at. This is me just finishing off the second one. Uh, in today's video, I only got a couple of clips because my phone died. Uh, it's on, the, on its way out, this phone. I've had it for like over three years now, and it was only a cheap 200 quid Chinese, uh, Chinese doodah. <coughs> uh, so, you know, I was going to bring, I've got my GoPro, but I just, there's a bit, you know, when it's cold, bit of drizzle, you don't want to, want to cart too much about. These days I try and only bring a couple of buckets of tools out of me, a couple of levels, and then, uh, you know, try to stash my profiles on site or 
you know, leave me. I have a couple of pairs of knackered levels uh, that are missing bubbles. I just leave on site and I strap to pillars like this. Uh, but I've just got two little, I have a six foot level and a little bit of box section. Uh, clamped to each side, just plumb to the face and plumbed up, you know, each end so it takes away four plumb points there. And then you've only got four plumb points on the back of the wall to do manually. But a lot of the time now, because these conning bricks are so uniform that I'm using, I tend to just plumb and, plumb and level every couple of course. <coughs> I just use my eye every uh, every couple of course. And then when it comes to gauge, if you can keep an eye on a 10mm joint, they never really creep up or down in gauge either. So you only have to use, I only use a tape measure twice when building this, just to check the gauge and the rest of the time I was bang on. <laughs> but yeah, this is the sort of work I've been doing the last few months. Um, work's pretty tight everywhere, you know. Only your sort of big, big gangs are getting a lot of the available plots, but I've been just jumping around doing bits and bobs like walls, top outs, and to be quite honest, I prefer building walls to houses at the moment with the with the way that NHBC are wanting cavities and stuff like that. Unless you're on a job with full for ventilation, it's just... It's just a major, a major hassle keeping these cavities in crazy nick, crazy clean nick, and you know it's just what it is. You know, with the prices dropping and then the cost of living going up, you've got a proper double kick in the knackers, and also with how how much time you spend cleaning your cavities and that, and keeping them clean, and this this and that, you just lose so much money. Whereas on a wall, you can just keep putting one on top of two, as you can see me here. <coughs> Even today with basically all free hand work me and Kai managed to get probably about 500 odd bricks laid and uh, <coughs> that's not yeah that's you know it's all with a level um, but yeah with the with these conny bricks you've got to get your mortar stiff this time of year pretty much any time of year but you know obviously because it's cooler um, cooler weather the mortar will keep a little bit better even when it's stiff especially in the in the black tubs I use so it's the only way to keep them stood up. When I saw slump, I've done it <coughs> even a couple of years back when I was doing those conny brick houses at Gleason. You know, I always use them mortar way too wet. You know, they're, they're going to slump after 10 course. The only way to do it is to build 10. Build 10 if you're using ready mix and move on. Because um, the wet mortar or the wet, if you've got wet bricks, you know, I can only go 8 or 10 course with these and then move on. But if they're dry like today and you've got stiff mix you can you can go about you know 15 15 you know is is pretty solid but you can go all the way 23 but just the chance of them moving after a bit it's just just one of the things with conny bricks just gonna be out you gotta keep an eye on them but as it in a pier they're a bit stronger anyway um well, it won't be the same on, on a fucking flat gable obviously if you're on a single skin cavity you've got to be really careful with these because they'll move but <laughs> I managed to knock up, knock up 23 course in a day or 22 in a day just with stiff enough gobble and dry enough bricks but it is what it is I know uh, I've watched Charlie Collison briefly I don't really watch much YouTube anymore since I, since I uh, stopped making videos six about six months back properly I don't really watch much but I watch Charlie now and again and I know he's banging on about the wet bricks and it's just a, it's as big as a kick in the teeth using these Connie bricks you know, um, even though I can, you can get, you can lay just as many of them. It's just your quality of work is, is temperamental when it comes to the weather. You know, and it, it just, in if you're in a big gang, fuck me. You know, it's just almost fucking impossible because you can't take, you can't take the bricks up. You can't get enough down in a day without them moving, especially with a bit of drizzle. Uh, that's why it's just, yeah, I'm back one on one again now. <coughs> I tried it last year with. The, with the bigger gang with Dean and that and it just fucking we were hour rushing about it's hard to get everyone pulling the weight it's just you're just too much it's all too much sometimes and then you end up making mistakes if you're rushing trying to cover cover wages and this this and that whereas one on one just a lot less a lot less stress a lot more chill I get off I get to work 8 o'clock ish I'm off by half 2 3 o'clock every day now I only ever stay if they need me to do something urgently and uh, but I try to get off ideally half two every day you know I don't want to and I don't have a snap anyway so I just work through <coughs> Kai does but I don't I don't bother having one because uh, 
especially this time of year. It's just it's it's fucking cold, it's grim, it's rainy, and you just want to get in, get in, get your money in, fuck off, you know. Uh, summertime, I can't wait. You know, last last summer was a bit hit and miss, bit of a tropical wet summer. We, you know, the, the, we didn't really have much heat, uh, but and then obviously I've had a double whammy of a bit of a recession this year. Uh, and then the cost of living and it all kicks us in the knackers because you know you get your prices dropped and then the cost of living's a lot more expensive than it was a few years ago <coughs> but we've all got to just keep plodding on um but yeah it'll pick up obviously uh, it all comes in in cycles there'll be boom boss busy times fucking lean times you know it is what it is but yeah you've got to you've got to uh, you just got to keep cracking but uh, keep slashing away one on top of two, as always. Um, but yeah, I don't want to be too de depressing in these videos, as, as you've probably noticed if you're watching this video now. There's a lot less content being filmed as well. That is also a reflection of the work, reflection of the prices. You know, a common thing that was happening a few a couple of years ago as well, when there was a lot more sites that sites going, a lot more work being advertised for. There were a lot of, a lot of places uh, advertising certain rates per thou and you weren't actually getting those rates per thou uh so you know you've always got to count up your count up your plots count up your prices you know and uh if you're actually if we uh, back when i got i think we got about a year ago i got a 750 a thou before it got cut before the prices dropped and you know if you get in a legitimate 750 a thou like uh like i i think i only have only ever got it once once on like one lift or whatever of two lift two lifts I was doing, um, you know you can really tell the difference compared to like the six hundred I think we're getting now. When well, last time I calculated a lift, on summit, so you know it is what it is. You know it's a what's that? What's from seven fifty to six hundred? What's that? A that's a twenty percent pay cut straight up. Uh, you know in the space of a year, so. I know any other fucking job, you know, if it be railway or if it be any sort of semi-government body, you'd have people fucking crying outside, outside fucking outside factories and striking and whatnot. But it's just, it's just the thing, just the, uh, just the, uh, you know, the way it is in the Brit Lane game. You know, there is no unions or anything like that. We're all self-employed. We're all free contractors. We're all fucking out there trying to. Running in a few quid, but I think it is. It does depend on where you are in the country. You know, obviously up north we had it right good for a couple of years, and then obviously now it's dropped a bit. But I think down south, I think the rates are still still staying pretty stable. But then you've got a lot of your Romanians, and you know you got the immigration problem that's fucking wrecking the country slowly. Um, but luckily all these you know with all these all these boat people coming over. There's a bit of more demand, more demand for houses than ever, so that's why we're all a lot of these houses we're building are for either investors who are investing in housing because they know that they know that people need houses in this country, or the housing association sells building council houses. So, is what it is. It's a bit of, bit of a fucked up situation at the moment. I think every industry is feeling it, you know, other than Brit Lane, but other than the uh, construction. Um, I know every trade is very similar. You know, you you know. Uh, it's not just just the Brit layers who have had the prices dropped. It'll be joiners and electricians, and you find a lot of the time now companies have, you know, like Sparkies and plumbers. They have them on day work, day rate or whatever, and they have, um, uh, you know, it's it's only those Brit layers who can def who can see the straight hit because we all work on exclusively price pretty much on housing. I know there's your agency jobs and this this and that playing set rates and stuff if you're building you know, commercials mainly. Uh, there is a few. I think there is a few housing firms who have ads on on set day on day rate. But I've tried me. I've tried me hand on uh, day work uh, on the agency before, and it bored me to tears. I'd rather be win, win, lose or draw, fucking price every day, and uh, you get to come and go as you please. Um, <coughs> but yeah. So as you can see me here, I do the method of racking up the pillars, racking up the pillar so I, you know, I start with you know two bricks returned, one in the middle, two on top, and then one in the mid, and then one on the one on top of that too, and then just f flip over and repeat. You can do the same with a two by two brick pillar, three by three brick pillar, one and a half by one and a half, whatever, whatever the technique. You know, you can just do the rack back method like that. 
Yeah, there wasn't ever something I got taught at college I just had to watch how people built pillars over the years and found this was the easiest way for me. Some people use a line to line pillars in, but you know, I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with lining pillars in. That you have to make sure every you know one course if it's sat slightly on the line can really throw off the old pillar. Here's a little clip of me here putting the profiles on. So I just with this with these Connie bricks, especially with this mortar, God. I built these on Friday, so they've been stood, I don't know, three days now. I could still smash me with F-clamps in with an hammer. That's how soft the cyclo mortar is sometimes, especially this time of year. Don't go hard. This Watt stuff, it don't go dead hard until, fucking hell, weeks later. So you can smash it, you can just hammer the F-clamp in. And that's me uh, levelling up one of my levels there as a profile. And then I just do the same with the uh, piece of box actually You can see it takes about... <laughs> about a minute, minute each profile, and uh, that'll save you over the space of. You'll have got that got that time back over the space of two course something like that, and it just makes it life a lot easier. To be fair, got young Kai in the back drop. He's he's building a little pier, pier as well. He did well with his his pier. I think he got like six or seven course on it, and uh, they're all pretty spot on. The pier is pretty spot on. I finished it off for him. Uh, so I'm trying to get him on the, on the trial as much as possible when we're when we're on some on some straight where we can get lines on. He does pretty well. He's doing pretty good. And these bricks are pretty forgiving when it comes to learning as well because the uniform they are a good brick to learn with. Um, but it's just just one of them with Connie bricks. They're just a bit of a shit piece of material. It's, it, they're cheap. Um, they have no face on them. You know they have like a sprayed on face or whatever. But the reason why you look up Connie bricks under the, some down lighting or under when the light shines on them, they all look wibbly wobbly all over. It's not because they were laid like that. It's just because they have they have a flat surface and nothing to deviate the face. That's why they all look. That's why they look a lent of redness when you shine light up them. Whereas like on a normal brick, it has a cla a printed a printed face or it has a a textured face to take away that flat looking. Um, glossy finish that you get with honey bricks that I don't think it looks very good you know whether I can lay a fucking thousand of them in the day or not you know it's it's by the fact they just don't look as good as a normal clay brick um, but it's what it is we've got to use the material we get given you know and if the work's in Connie bricks I'm going to lay them you know because um, I can but I'm not saying I like the look <laughs> uh, you know but I've got to say once they have been jet washed they do look pretty good you know there's one thing that i never understand about this country you know not a lot of you know up until this that the house in uh the subby i work for at the moment the, you know they sub the jet wash all the houses are standard but i remember years ago not all houses were jet washed you know and i think you know once they are jet washed they do look better and in places like australia and that every all brickwork gets jet washed in america all brickwork gets jet washed and i think it should be just standard practice anyway you know you want if you finish a house, there's dust and crap flying around it. You'd want it jet washed anyway, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's like putting your windows in and not cleaning them. You know what I mean? So you always clean your windows. Why right? jet washing your brickwork it should be standard? You know, it don't mean that you're fucking rough or whatever. If you have to have your have your, have your have to have your house fucking jet washed, it's just it's, it's, it should be part of the fucking process. You know, it should be part of the building process, but. Is what it is. Is what it is. I think the 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 practices are slowly changing. Um, I've heard of them fucking putting jet washers in cavities nowadays, but makes fucking makes no sense at all. Take the cavity that's meant to stay dry, stop moisture, and then fucking blast the jet washer in it. There's a lot of things at the moment going on with the cavity side of housing that's just fucking, you know, just makes no sense. A bit of dust on a tire wire. Completely agree with what Charlie was saying. It, it's just fucking. We've got super thick damps now, stronger than ever, and yet they want them leaf, leaf blowing clean. <laughs> Mopping, basically. For what purpose? Nothing, no effect on anything else. It isn't creating any fucking hell, high yield value. Um, that's coming from the materials, so if, you know, hopefully we'll see more thermalite blocks, better to work with. And... Hopefully we'll see fucking hell. I've got to say, fucking I don't know what the U value is on a Connie brick, but I've got to say a clay brick must be warmer. Because uh, fucking hell, Connie's horrible. So, I don't know. I don't know what the uh, 
what happens when it comes to the U values or stuff with these bigger cavities that are going to be coming. From what I've seen, they're not making cavities bigger, they're just putting more insulation in and making using higher U value blocks. So hopefully that sticks, hopefully we stick to that. So we don't want to be going to making a pier every fucking window reveal, do we? 150 mil cavities, no thanks. Um, <coughs> but yeah, same again, a little another angle here of me laying, laying some bricks on this pier. And uh, yeah, a nice little steady day today. I like building these piers. It's nice just stood in one spot. You know, that's one thing as well. Um, that's why I build corners a lot of the time. I, I, built a, I built a top out of the weekend. And I use my six foot level and build big corners so I ain't gonna move up and down the gable. Especially this is a ma this is a major thing when using clay bricks mainly. Clay bricks they go off quick and especially if you've if you're on your own or even if we have Kai's with me and he's jointing up, it's easier to it's more manageable to build a corner, joint it up. And especially on the uh a lot of these spandle panel cups these days, you build a big corner and you can bang all your fucking bang all your uh your timber ties in as you're building your corner so you don't feel like you're banging as many in because you you're doing them a little bit at a time just banging some ties up a corner build another corner bang some ties up that one and run it in and bang ties in a little bit you know it splits it all up um it's not fastest obviously for your bigger gangs and that you know you don't want to put profiles on and this 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 and that but nowadays i try to do what i enjoy because I enjoy, you know, I enjoy Brit Lane for the most part. Don't always enjoy recording it, like, but if I enjoy it, I'm gonna be better at it. I'm gonna be faster at it, and I think that's what people don't realise. You know, you've got to do it how you feel comfortable and I and I enjoy doing it, and you're gonna be better at it. You know, I've not sped any of these any of this footage up that you're seeing, but when I'm enjoying it, I go quicker. When I'm less stressed, I go quicker, and it's just a nicer. It's a nicer way to work, you know, you get into like something called the flow state, so that's one thing I, I've got to emphasise, you know, I got out of my comfort zone last year, I wasn't fucking enjoying it, I was stressed, I like, didn't like the work, work in the situation, didn't like who I'm working with, and it made me stressed, what I wanted as good, wanted as neat, didn't create as good a, as good a job as I could, you know, that's all because of stress, I had a bit of outside, stuff outside of work going on, but you know, this year I've took a bit of a turn to corner, you know, turn the corner of eighteen months sober and I think if you can address some of your stress some of your stresses in your life you'll get a lot more done at work as well. You know. The less stressed you are the more you'll get done. The more the more uh, the better your sleep is the more you'll get done and with a lot less ease and then you'll you'll enjoy it as well because you'll not have to You'll not have to work as you don't have to try as hard. That's one thing I've found after year on year and after looking back and doing this YouTube. Every year I just don't have to try as hard. You know, I get the same amount done or the similar amount done or more done even without putting as much effort in. And that's the main thing about trying to make stuff easy and life easy. Uh, you know, is, uh, you know, getting a lot done but not trying as hard and not working smarter in a sense. I know there's a, I know there's a traditional bricky with his work hard and start work hard or starve shit, but you know, and there's working smart and there's overworking and all. You don't got overwork. Cause you start burning out, doing too much, you'll end up like I've been guilty of fucking working what five, six o'clock at night and achieving nothing. Sometimes I get more done. I get more done in six and a half hour now than I used to get done in nine hour, ten hour of days gone by of me fucking smashing twelve guns of Stella on a night. But yeah, it's just what it is when it you know. Anyway, I'm not gonna keep rambling on. I'll uh I'll uh, let you guys oh, Are you kidding me? Oh no, it's is it recording? Oh yeah, sorry, I thought this wasn't recording, I'd uh I've been devastated. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this little bit of footage. Hope you enjoyed the voiceover. I'm gonna put a bit of music on it for the end, and uh, hope you guys uh, are doing well. Hope you guys, everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's uh, still working. Hope everyone's uh, not out of work. I know does Britlayer's out of work. I, I can't really take you uh, and Facebook as an accurate representation. So when I was finding Kai. I had about fucking all oh, about ten people ring me, and some of them weren't really looking for a, weren't really looking for a start, and 
some were serious, some weren't. So I know everywhere's just a bit slow at the moment, but I think it's picking up, and I think there is some anticipation for a resurgence in house building. And uh, you know, hopefully, when it goes when it goes uh, when it goes pot when it goes bang again, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get some real decent prices again. Put some fucking money away for when it goes shit again. <laughs> anyway. Right. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys. Probably another week with another video. I'm, I can't see it. I've got. I don't know if you can set a bit of scaffold to your right hand side behind that digger. That's a garage I've got to finish off that I built. I'm doing this wall on that garage. And I don't know what I'm doing after that. So I might record next week after I've got this wall done on that. If. I can be asked. I'll record myself doing some wall tops with the with the head cam on um, later on this week, and I might make a video about that, so you guys can see how I build these fucking tile tops. Because um, I can build them pretty quick nowadays, you know, after many years of doing them, and uh, they're not bad. I actually enjoy doing them. Actually, I enjoy doing them after times of old doing them. It takes me back to the time I time I used to work with my old man. Fucking good days, good days. All right, guys. Uh, I think we're coming to the end of this clip anyway. I don't even know if I'll bother putting any music on. Right, I'm gonna. It's getting late. I'm going down for a cup of tea and a tea cake because my fucking mouth and the throat is sore as fuck as you can hear. Right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. So yeah, it's uh, three o'clock. I'm back home in the garage. We got about 550 brick or something down today. Uh, well, yeah, I'll show you tomorrow. My phone died after about an hour of recording. Not even that. Probably fucking half an hour. So yeah, right. See you guys in the next clip. So uh, this is what we got done yesterday. And then them four, and then these four, and I'm just uh, building the first one again. You know, the last one, shall I say? Uh, so I'll build the way out profiles, a couple of blocks to up, away we go. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I'll get all this done tomorrow, today. All the brick on edge on, it's just the same as that wall over there, brick on edge on bottom. So yeah, right, I'll see you in a bit.